It was in Pantis Hall at Pratt Institute on a Friday night. It all took place on the third floor. Healthy choices, they called it. And it was in this room where our story began. Aaron and friends were hanging out in the room watching television. Bored with just lounging around, the group thought about what they could do this evening. Suddenly, Aaron had an idea, and one that would mischievously involve all of them. Knowing full well it was 2 a.m., it was going to be very risky. Let's go give our friends a little wake-up call. Literally. Now as childish and silly as this intended idea was, it was in fact very humorous. Consisting of bandanas and a small group of mischievous immature boys with nothing to do, would pull a prank that their second half of the hall will never forget. But little would they know, however, that their conclusion to their prank would be very much unexpected. You see, the plan was simple as it was immature. As they reached the destination which happened to be Kate and Nicole's dorm, the group would run in loud as possible and scare the living daylights out of them when a minute before they were in a deep, deep sleep. Except this time, there was something unanticipated. It's locked! The crew looked stumped and taken aback. Dumbfounded, hopeless, and frustrated, they all looked as though they lost a major sporting event. And just as the situation at hand looked grim, Plan B! Aaron semi-shouted. The group looked at him anxiously for the answer. If we can't get them from the inside, then we'll just have to cause a major ruckus from out here. And so they did exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until a little after that moment that six fists banging on a door could have been the loudest noise that they could ever comprehend. Hiding back at Mackenzie's place. Dude, that was ridiculously loud. We should wait five more minutes and then do it again. And just as five minutes passed, <laughs> they did it again. But what they didn't know right away was that their victim that night was now wide awake and extremely pissed off. Back at the room, Oh my god, you guys. They're gonna kill us tomorrow morning. Come on, one more round, you guys. Wait, we should probably wait a little longer. They could be out in the hallway waiting. Hey, I hear voices. The group scuttled to the door in excitement and curiosity. But what they were listening to were footsteps from a very unhappy person. A person who was suddenly awoken in the middle of the night. A person who was out to avenge her sleeplessness. Meanwhile, I'm telling you, dude, it's too risky. She's probably out there right now. But it was too late. Whatever, man. Don't worry about it. Well, well, well. It wasn't up until then that Aaron realized there was indeed something to worry about. Real mature, guys. Real mature. At that point, they realized what they did was quite embarrassing. Um, look, we're really sorry about... Your apology is worthless to me. Oh, well, um... Do you realize what it's like to be awoken from a deep sleep? Well, um, yeah. It's called high school. Silence, fool! You might have been wondering who that intimidating figure next to Kate is. His muscular, masculine features, good looks, and icy blue eyes were just some of the reasons to why the Fabulous Three were so... petrified. 
He was Kate's boyfriend, and he meant business. What are you guys still doing out here, huh? Because it's our hallway. <laughs> That's it. If we're not going to be mature grown adults and express our feelings in a simple situation as to how one another should calm down and work things out, then there's going to be a whole load of whoop ass tonight. And just as you thought things could not get any more outrageous, But then, all of a sudden, what the hell's going on? Ah! You guys are so freaking loud. Could you shut your traps and quiet it down? The group hung their heads in shame, coming to realize their battle would have to come to an end. As the Fab Three joyously celebrated their semi-victory, there was one thing they could both agree on saying. Fuck Colorade.